Warriors are on a three game winning streak. Again, that's the first time we're able to say that this season. And we are early in the season, but that doesn't matter. Warriors fans have already been through the ringer. Uh, we have been emotionally torn on this team for the past 21 games. And finally, we are seeing some hope, some joy in this team. Uh, just this last game we had versus the Timberwolves on, on Sunday afternoon, we saw Draymond Green in the fourth quarter you know, get a tech for coming off the bench and celebrating a little bit too much. And So what happens in the next minute? Dante DiVincenzo dr uh, drills a three, and then Steph hops off the bench and intentionally gets a tech uh, to, to show the team that we are having fun. We don't care what the refs say. You know, that's not going to affect us. And man, as a Warriors fan, I'm having fun. A uh, little bit of a stat here. The Warriors are now officially tied for the third hottest team in the league. Right now, the Celtics are number one, being 9-1 and one in their last 10 games. Uh, for the Pacers, Indiana Pacers, man, we might have to talk about them as a serious, at least getting into the playoffs team once they're in the playoffs who knows what would happen but uh they're looking like they can make the playoffs not even fall into the play in they are eight and two in their last 10 and then the kings and warriors are both seven and three in their last 10 and all the hype was on the kings about you know oh man they're they're amazing and yeah they went on a i think a six or seven game winning streak and so they might be 0-2 or 0-3 in their last couple games. And so it's a little bit of a different stat than what the Warriors have, who kind of went from, you know, losing one, then they went on a two-game winning streak, dropping a game intentionally, and then now they're on a three-game winning streak. But still, I'm here to say that the Warriors are finally solidifying our, our uh, beliefs that they can repeat. Now, they're still the ninth seed, okay? Let's look at the... The standings here, the updated standings in the Western Conference. We already know Suns, Nuggets, Pelicans, Grizzlies. And when the fifth seed comes around, now we're getting into the kind of gray area, seeing who's really contending to be in the playoffs. So, fifth seed, Kings, then the Blazers, then the Clippers, Jazz, Warriors, and Timberwolves. We just beat the T Wolves. So, you know, we're, we're, overcoming them and, and getting higher in the standings we're we're getting there that's what i want to say the warriors are figuring things out coaching staff maybe is uh preventing certain things from happening on the second unit by putting the main guys in there with them regardless the warriors have a chance and they're showing it to us once again um Let's talk about the Timberwolves a little bit because, you know, we talk about the Warriors so much. So we finally got to see the Timberwolves uh, up close. And I love um, Carl Anthony Towns' offensive game. Uh, he has so many moves. He can, he's pretty much a, a lame Joel Embiid. Like Joel Embiid can go off for 59. And Cat can kind of do the same thing, but he's a little bit less intentional about it. But his body language, and shout out to, once again, we, we mentioned him quite a bit here on this channel, but shout out to Kenny Beecham, or Kenny for real. Uh, he was mentioning in a video not too long ago that the Timberwolves have some of, and especially Cat, the worst body language in the NBA. And it really affects the young guys like Anthony Edwards. But... Add Rudy Gobert to that, and he, Rudy Gobert has never been, you know, a super poor body language kind of guy, but just those three, and then also I wanted to mention, I know I'm going kind of off a little bit here, D'Angelo Russell is such a weird NBA player, like you know he can hit shots, you know he can cross you up, but he's so, I don't even know the word for it, but it's not pleasing to watch him play. Um, he's supposed to be a pick and roll guy, and that doesn't happen a lot. So he gives the ball up to Anthony Edwards, who's supposed to also get Rudy Gobert in the mix, but that doesn't happen. You know, Ant just tries to go off on his own and score 50 himself, and that doesn't work. 
I know it's still early in the season. We were saying that for the Warriors as well, and now look at them. They're, they're finally getting back on track. Now, they're only on a three-game win streak, so they haven't won the championship yet. They haven't made the playoffs yet, but uh, the Timberwolves have kind of a shorter leash because they haven't won championships. And last year, uh, again, Kenny did a an episode just today about how some teams have successfully tanked or successfully rebuilt their teams and one of those teams was the phoenix suns the way they got back into it was you know they had all these losing seasons terrible losses devin booker was a part of those teams deandre ayton was a part of those teams and then right up until the bubble they were doing okay they got into the bubble and then they went undefeated and then they added a guy like chris paul who can kind of just change culture or or add a major veteran presence and so then the next year they went to the finals they lost in the finals but so the year before was a culture change completely and you know they they built a team that the fans could really root for and then the next year they made the finals last year the timberwolves had that major culture change maybe it was patrick beverly maybe it was something else but the fans could really root for them and they loved it then just this year timberwolves are back to being that same kind of disappointment it's crazy because they're they're 500 right now you know the warriors are are pretty much 500 but it's different because you gave up five first round draft picks for a center that is not a two-way player you know obviously he's an amazing defender but five first round draft picks for rudy gobert and jared vanderbilt who not many you know fans know of him but those hardcore fans really do jared vander jared vanderbilt is that glue guy and they totally got rid of him just it was a weird trade and now the timberwolves are kind of stuck being a disappointment but we are here to say that the warriors are getting over that hump of being a disappointment uh clay looked great steph looked great draymond looked amazing uh we talked last episode about jordan Poole a little bit he's getting back into it but i want to see him in a really competitive game uh this one wasn't this one was a blowout from the beginning yeah timberwolves brought it to within 10 in the fourth quarter but that didn't affect the game you know, you had Steph who could close out the game. I, I want to see JP in, in a closeout game uh, on the court, maybe having, you know, Clay fouled out. I, I don't actually want this to happen, but just to kind of put him in that pressure moment and see what happens to really gauge where he is this season. But again, like I said, I don't actually want that to happen. It would just be nice to see. Well, the Warriors now go to Dallas and face Luka Doncic, uh, oh, and the Mavericks, that's right, (laughs) pretty much right now the Mavericks are the 2017-2018 Houston Rockets, you had James Harden dribbling until the ball had no more air in it, and then he would drive, either kick out or try and draw a foul, Luka isn't necessarily trying to draw fouls as much as James did, I always hated Harden, I don't hate watching Uh, Luca play but the team is kind of built the same way and so we we need this win obviously the the Warriors do but Luca and the Mavericks also need this win they are uh, the 11th seed right now they are 500 Uh, they play today so that might change but they are uh, currently they've lost three in a row and Luca is trying his darndest and nothing is working um I have Spencer Dinwiddie on my fantasy team, and and that's not working either. Christian Wood was brought in, and that is working, but not as much as they wanted it to. So we'll see what happens on Tuesday. Uh, if the Warriors win, boom, four-game winning streak. We are then, you know, fifth, sixth seed, and we're feeling great. But if we lose, we let the Mavericks come right back and uh, hurdle us in the standings. So we'll see. Stay tuned for another episode uh, on Wednesday morning. And uh, until next time, stay cool.